So, um, hi. Thanks, everyone. Sorry for my uh, uh, terrible AV problems. Uh, so, the uh, title of this talk is called Gorilla GRC. Um, uh, so, I don't have anything interesting or sexy to talk about uh, in terms of, uh, you know, um, you know, Russian threat actors, attribution, uh, uh, takedowns. Uh, this is perhaps a bit more of a mundane conversation, uh, but still something that's important uh, for what we all do in the day-to-day -day of security. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and really the, the talk is actually not going to be that long uh, it's really just hoping to garner enough people who are interested in continuing this conversation uh, this afternoon and tomorrow uh, to sort of talk about, you know, what you all are doing and uh, if, you know, uh, if any of this jives with you and what we can do to make things better. So, um, so who am I? Uh, I'm John Duxta. I'm a principal security engineer at Ubico. Uh, been in the business for a while, been at some other places there. Um, what are the things I do? Uh, my areas of focus are uh, primarily infrastructure security. Uh, you know, came up traditional. Uh, you know, I started out in this business 25 years ago doing systems and network administration stuff. Uh, um, these days, you know, it's a little less about the traditional networks and more about clouds. Uh, very interested in zero trust uh, and uh, applied cryptography. Cryptography. So uh, you can. Uh, Check, uh, follow me in the various places there with that handle. Uh, that's pronounced duck sauce. Uh, so, um, Yubico is a cloud native company, right? Um, we don't, you know, we have uh, we have networks at our offices because you have to share things. You, know, you have to be be able to get on the internet. Uh, but for the most part, our offices are like Starbucks. Uh, the you know, network-wise, except with printers added. So, um, and uh, one of the things about being cloud native is that, well, when you're cloud native, every tool is a vendor for the most part. Uh, uh, you're you're high buying a bunch of SaaSes from various things. So you've got your HIRS system, your CRM, your alert manager, your service desk, your log management, uh, some marketing thing, your ERP, uh, and they're all services that uh, that run on somebody else's computer. Uh, which means that you're then talking about taking your data and putting it on somebody else's computer. Um, granted, that data probably started from some on another somebody else's computer. It's all on somebody else's computer. So, um, how do you control your data? How do you assess the risk of the vendors that you're going to be giving your data to. Um, uh, so some quick numbers about Yubico. By the numbers, we are about 250 employees. Uh, we have five security engineers, a TPM, and a CISO, and no GRC people, right? So uh, hence why this is Gorilla GRC, because we're just kind of doing it as we go and figuring out as we go along. Last year, we did 45 outbound vendor security assessments uh, for the business wanting to use different tooling. Some of them were successful, some of them weren't. Uh, and we took eight inbound ones as well from people asking about us. But on average, uh, this is all about the outbound stuff, by the way, but on average, we did about one assessment per week uh, in 2019. Uh, and so you can imagine with five engineers, that tends to eat up some time. Uh, so, and the way the business works, you know, uh, somebody from marketing or sales comes to you and says, I really want to use this tool. And uh, so can, can you review it real quick? And I'd like to start using it on Wednesday. Um, well, uh, that's not always, uh, you know, it's, it's not easy to do that. And it really depends on the tool and it depends on the data. So, um, so we, we have a process. It's pretty well defined. Uh, we get a request in. We have an SLA for responding to that request. We determine the data classification of the data that's involved. Like, um, you know, uh, 
and uh, we calibrate the review accordingly. Uh, we're going to do a different, as you'll see in a sec, different depth of a review for something that's going to talk to our CRM and our, you know, uh, our mail and calendar systems than we would say for something that's just going to be protecting, you know, an organization system for public marketing assets. Um, we collect and review the data from the vendor. So uh, we'll get various, you know, uh, documentation from them. We'll send them a questionnaire. Uh, we'll get SOC 2s and things like that. Uh, we review all the information. We do some poking around of our own, and we write a report. So, and like I said, it's variable speed. So somebody, uh, so we, and we kind of break it up into three tiers. You have a tier one review for your most sensitive data. This is the, uh, or for a critical service. Um, this is the kind of thing where uh, a, a breach of that data, a leak of that data, uh, a, an operational issue with the vendor, uh, any of these things could have the potential for irreparable harm or reputational damage for the company. Um, we estimate that the work to do this kind of review is going to take us about 16 to 32 person hours to collect the information, review it, et cetera. Um, and, you know, three to four weeks total to get it done because there's often a lot of lag time dealing with the vendors to get the data that you need from them. Tier two, maybe not quite so sensitive data, maybe not quite a critical service, less, gonna take a little less time to do, you know, both in person hours and in weeks to do. And then a tier three thing might be something that's, it's generally like, it's almost always a situation where it's public data. Uh, and it's just maybe a system to organize it. Uh, we had a request to, we uh, recently got a request from the marketing folks to use a tool that just helps, literally helps them organize marketing assets, uh, images, documents, things like that. Um, so, um, and that kind of thing is usually a real quick review. Yeah, it looks like it's not going to kill anybody. You know, three or four hours of poking at it, getting some info and, you know, get that out. So, uh, the doc reviews. Uh, everybody who's ever read a SOC 2, please raise your hand. Everybody who's managed to stay awake while reading that SOC 2, please raise your hand. Great, great. Okay, I'm not the only one who uses it for curing my insomnia. So, um, it's, uh, uh, they're interesting docs. Uh, SOC reports are, uh, are uh, you know, they're, they're a choose your own adventure for the company when you're, when you're developing what your processes are going to be. So uh, they're not necessarily a guarantee that they're doing the best things, uh, but they're at least, uh, when you get to the SOC 2 Type 2s, they're uh, a, some level of assertion of consistency of what they're doing. Uh, you know, a termination process may be, uh, may include uh, just you know, oh, we have a spreadsheet of all the systems that we need to take each person out of when they're terminated, and that, that could literally be their process. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be automated. As long as they follow that process and can document that they followed that process every time, well, great, then check. So uh, you get to read other things, some policy documents. Uh, the Cloud Security Alliance cake uh, questionnaire is actually pretty good, and it covers a variety of uh, uh, compliance regimes uh, with the data that gets collected. Um, ISO 27001 certifications are literally that. It, you know, it's like a cert you can hang on the wall. Um, and somebody says, you never really see anything behind that. And once in a while, you'll get a vendor that'll hand you a pen test report from a recent pen test, and that's always interesting. Uh, sometimes you get some really juicy nuggets out of that. Um, so, uh, and I've actually had, I had one review where there was a piece of pen uh, something in the pen test data that made me like follow up with further questions for them when everything else looked good. And I'm like, what were you doing over here and why? So, um, yeah. So uh, another step that we do, uh, we do a, uh, a non-invasive tech review. So uh, um, we might, you know, we'll, we'll uh, 
poke at a site with uh, Mozilla Observatory and SSL Labs, see what kind of state they look, you know, they're, they're in. Uh, if uh, Mozilla Observatory, if you haven't played with it, is a great tool for sort of evaluating the uh, general HTTP uh, service posture of a web service. Uh, they cover, you know, a nice checklist and score of things like, are they doing HSTS? Uh, do they have some basic XSS uh, protections, at least things that come through in headers? Uh, do they have a content security policy? Uh, you know, and uh, just like code has a smell, well, website headers have a smell too. And uh, so if somebody hasn't bothered to do even some of the most basic protections on a web service, I'm going to kind of dig into the a little bit more and be like, how does that look? And it might leave you to question what's going on underneath the hood. Similarly with their uh, TLS posture, um, you, uh, I mean, it's really simple these days, especially if you're running an AWS or GCP or Azure, uh, to get an A plus on SSL labs. You go with the default that the cloud provider gives you, and you get that for the most part. Um, but, you know, I've gotten some Fs on some vendors, found some really terrible things. Um, other things that we look for personally, like federated login support. I don't want my users to have to, uh, we don't want our users to have to have more usernames and passwords. You know, we, we would like to bind, you know, like have it bound in with our, uh, you know, with our, um, you know, SAML or OIDC logins. Um, and uh, logging and audit support. Can you ship me some logs? Like, what are my users doing? How, how, how is the data being handled? Uh, so, um, or if you can't ship them to me, does your service even have auditing support in it? Uh, so, uh, these are the kind of things we look for. Um, other bits, uh, historical security incidents. Uh, has this vendor ever been breached? How did they respond to it? Like, that's uh, a generally a really good measure of a company. Uh, do you get the security equivalent of thoughts and prayers out of them after a breach? Or do they properly take responsibility for it? Uh, and, uh, and are they transparent about what happened, how they responded, and how they mitigated the problem? Uh, these are the kind of things that we look for. Um, other things, uh, how reachable is the vendor? Uh, if there's a security researcher that has found an issue, do they have a security, a slash security page on their website? Do they have a security at alias? Uh, how, you know, if I send a note to them at security at company.com, how long does it take them to respond to me? Uh, and, uh, you know, who, you know who's, who's doing the response? So uh, just these are the kind of things we look for as well. So and then once they take all this information, and again, the, the depth that some of these things get done, all of these things get done in the tier one review. Not all of them get done with all the others, because uh, again, different depths for each one. But then we create a report and provide advice to the business. Um, and say, you know, we uh, take all these things, we weight, we give them scores, different sections are weighted differently, and then we come up with a weighted score, a final score of, you know, low, medium, high, very high confidence, and tell them, tell the business that, you know, that this is, this is what we're, this, this is how we feel about this vendor. Um, and uh, so, but we don't say no. Like, if somebody comes up with a low confidence, the, the, you know, we, we say, we're not super comfortable with them. If you really insist on using this, then that needs to be escalated to the appropriate leadership level for a risk acceptance. Uh, so, uh, but that's how we handle that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's the, uh, it's the general workflow uh, that we go through. I'm curious about what everybody else is doing, though. That's why I'm having this talk and hoping that some of you would like to have this conversation uh, this afternoon, tomorrow. Um, what, you know, can we make this better? Uh, the, uh, I, I want to know what you all are doing. Um, 
is this a faster or slower process for you? Uh, how long does it take you all to get these done? Uh, how deep are you going? Um, and let's talk about the process and build some guidance for other teams so, uh, so they don't have to do it again from scratch. So that's what I'm looking to talk about and uh, help move things along. And uh, um, just uh, because, you know, this is an obligatory slide that most every uh, security talk should have, we're hiring. Uh, we're looking for some product security engineers um, in uh, uh, Seattle area and in Stockholm, Sweden, if you would like it where it's cold and dark um, in both places. Um, and we're also looking for actually a security assessment assurance manager. So, uh, you know, if that's your bag, uh, we'd love somebody to uh, actually own this all together and uh, help us out that way. But uh, in, in the interim, let's, uh, let's have a conversation and uh, let's make this better for the industry as a whole. Thank you. Thanks, John. Any questions? Uh, just uh, how much of this do you publish to, uh, like, guess the requesters ahead of time? Like, uh, we do have yeah. So we have a, an internal page that explains the process. Uh, they're, you know, not always. You know, a lot of times, like, you know, they they don't go to our website. They're, they'll just email us and be like, "Hey, I want to use this thing," you know, and that's where like often the uh, you know so it, like the, the SLAs are published and all of that. But the, you know, the, yeah, they, they, they're kind of like, I, I want to use it now. You're holding me up. So. <laughs> Some more back there. How would your uh, thought process change if it, the vendor was an open source project? Pardon? If the vendor was an open source project? That's not a vendor. Okay. So the class of the, 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 an open source project is a tool. Um, now, there's other reviews that we would do for a tool, but if it's an open source project mm -hmm. and a tool, and that's the kind of thing that we're going to be self-hosting and self-managing, mm -hmm. then that's, uh, that's sort of a different process, but it's not a vendor review. A vendor is when I'm going to give you my data, and you're going to store and process that. So something like a CRM or an ERP or a... Uh, you know, document management or storage, uh, a storage company of some sort, you know, something like that. So. Oh, so it has to be a hosted vendor in your case. It's not yeah. like if a tool was accessing your yeah. data it, yeah. and what it does with your data, that's not in your yeah. purview. Yeah, think SaaS. Okay. Any SaaS. SaaS only. Got it. So. All right, thanks. Yep. So, any other questions? There's one up here, Joel. Okay. Oh, hi, I'm, I'm George. So, hi, George. Um, from my experience, most of these third party vendors, they are not willing to share any of this information at all unless you have specific verbiage in a contract that requires them to do so. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, so, uh, I actually have had, we, uh, the, I've found most of the SASs, we, we find that pretty much all the SASs are perfectly willing to provide this data. Often it'll be under NDA. So like if they want, if you want to see a, SAT, a SOC 2 uh, or any kind of audit report like that or a pen test report, you're going to go through a process of, and this is where those, you know, like especially for the tier one reviews, where those couple of weeks come into play where you're trying to get the data because then, oh, well, you want to see the SOC 2, then we need to have an, N an NDA in place. And then our lawyers get to talk to their lawyers while they do the NDA business. Uh, but uh, I've actually run into a couple, uh, we've run into a couple of vendors that have been just fantastic. Uh, vendors who are, you know, they, they do the cloud thing all the time. That is their business. They, they, they host services in the cloud. There are a handful of them out there where you go to their security page and all the, all the data is there. And maybe you click through and you fill out an online NDA with them for some of that data, like their SOC 2, um, but then you're downloading it in that moment, and uh, and and you're reading it then. So those are the I love them. They're the best. Uh, the ones where it goes back and forth, it's a pain in the butt. 
So, so um, we have to deal with this quite a bit. Yeah. And I noticed that most of the services you were talking about were back-end type services, right? right? Right. So how would you deal with that whenever you're dealing with, say, an engineering team creating a product, those types of things? Uh, what we deal with is initially trying to find, uh, obviously, the system boundary, the Gazintas, Gozatas, those types of things. Yep. Do you still do that type of thing uh, and think in that context, or um, is that probably is that more applicable when you're dealing with more of a of a uh, an engineering type of service versus a back end type of service? You when you difference? say an engineering service, are you talking like a source repository right. or? Uh, or a bug management system, or, or a, 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 a wiki, full, a full CI/CD pipeline. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, uh, the uh, we do like the process doesn't really change uh, depending on the kind of data, uh, you know, because source code has a classification, and you know the the processing of uh, you know and and the the like source code and the processing thereof. All kind of falls into the same classification. Okay. Um, so, so the second part of that, uh, to follow up on that, is, do you ever have? Because you know, it's, they always wanted it yesterday, right? I, I want to start off with my project. And, yeah. And what we found is a lot of times they wind up being science projects, of <laughs> like I want to use this and poke it for real, so I can figure out how I want to do my workflow. And I don't really put much thought into my workflow. I really just want it to, to, to work. And once I figure out one thing that works and it does what I need it to do, I'm good to go. So do you ever like give the moment of pause and say, no, we need to go through and figure out what modules you want to use, what your, what your actual business workflow is, the value to the business and these types of things. Do you ever do that type of consulting that's required? There, uh, so for the most, like most of them have been pretty clear cut and dry. Uh, where they'll come to us and say, like, this is the this is either the tool or a class of tool that I want to use. And uh, I recently had one come through where it was a in terms of a class of tool, it was like a data connector tool. So that will like ER, that will ETL data from one of your SASs into another SAS. And the one they came to me with, I did a sort of like quick look at it, and I was like. Who gave me shutters and you know uh, made me want to run away screaming? Uh, so I said to them, "Well," and then I did a quick, you know, I was like, "Well, let me do, let me spend a couple hours doing a quick survey of this market and this class of product." Um, and I was like, "This one looks good. This one looks good." Then they came, you know, and then they were also they're also working with some consultants, and they came around and said, "Oh, well, we found this. There's this other one that the consultant likes." And I'm like, oh, that yeah, yeah, that looks great. Yeah, let's work with that. So, um, so yeah, there's often a little bit of back and forth there of, um, you know, help on product selection. But for the most part, they're, uh, you know, they're they they usually have a good idea of the product, the actual service that they want to use. So, cool. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other? Yep. So you mentioned getting access to things like SOC 2 reports, pen testing reviews, and things like that. Yep. Uh, do you yourself or part of your team ever kind of follow up on that? And if, if there's, you know, pen tests only tell you what was wrong, what was found that was wrong, not necessarily what was covered. So you don't necessarily know that the coverage was complete. It might have been a super senior resource at that company, or it might have been a junior who's just been there for a month. So do you do any follow on, you know, Take out the free trial account and test it yourself before passing it along. Uh, so generally, yeah, I, I uh, we don't we wouldn't do a pen test of a vendor service even on a trial account because that usually you you always want to have permission to pen test somebody's tooling. Uh, so uh, and we yeah we don't actually have the resources you know small team to pen test every tool that we're going to use. And we would not, I don't imagine that any vendor would give us the permission to do so. So. Um, I, I asked because I've been doing some work in this space, yeah. uh, sort of like a general category, like an industry-wide problem that, that is fairly common. And so my approach has been, uh, 
I create an account, my own account. I create a second account, my own account. Can I do any sort of thing between those two accounts that I own? Sure, sort of cross looking exactly. looking for cross account That's right. access things. Yeah. yeah. And then if the if the vendor has a bug bounty program, then I follow those bug bounty rules <laughs> rather than the terms and conditions of an average user. Uh, so those two steps get me a little bit closer to being able to you know pry a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I usually will pry, will pry at you know uh, if, if there's a demo account. We'll often do things uh, in terms of like poking at functionality. Yeah. Does this, you know, uh, do, do are all are all the right uh, pieces of functionality there that we that we want? Um, you know, is there an SSO capability? Is there logging? You know, can I ship logs to my my logging tool? Uh, you know, can I can I do? And yes, maybe some minor things like that. But definitely, I'm not going to be like heavy duty pen testing anything. That's for sure. Absolutely. And yeah. last question. I missed the first half of the talk, so you might have covered this. But there are companies out there that do this as a service, like UpGuard and, and third-party companies like that. Okay. That sort of they do it questionnaire-based. The, there might be some that do it based on like give us your pen test as well. Have you investigated that? Do you use any of them? Uh, we have not. Um, but yeah, it's probably something worth looking into. Yeah. If uh, and yeah, I mean, we'd love to talk about some of those things. So. I think CyberGRX is another one that does that, like a third party in between. So you talked about providing confidence levels to your internal customers. Yes. Do you uh, ever get involved in uh, different risk management strategies for different confidence levels, like transferring the risk to your vendor or accept? Because you mentioned accepting it, but there are other strategies. Do you guys look at that at all, or? So I mean, uh, for some of the. Not really into like transferring risk to the vendors or whatever, yeah. But I mean, I've done things along the lines of, I've had a like a low confidence review come out, and uh, you know, when when there are some things that are obvious deficiencies, mm -hmm. uh, we will report those to the vendor and say, look, you're, you know, uh, we're not really happy. Uh, we don't really like the posture of your service. You're missing X, Y, Z, and you know, um, please fix these things. And you know, that's that would be. That would make it better. So, so, last question that I would have is: Do you see this as becoming more robust in uh, in, in your company, and do you see ways to expand this to mitigate even more of the risk for these services? Uh, so, yeah, like we definitely would like to make this more robust, but we'd also like to make it more streamlined. We make it, like to make it faster, make it easier for our users, uh, make it easier for us. Um, and uh, you know maybe when we hire said GRC person, uh, you know they will have some better ideas. Um, we're you know uh, our team you know is you know our infrastructure and product security folks. So um, so this is you know we've kind of hacked this uh, again the gorilla part. We sort of hacked this process together, um, and. Uh, you know, and that's the way that that's what we've done. That's why I'm here talking to you, to talking to everybody here, and want to continue this conversation, uh, so that other folks don't have, so we can put something out there, and other folks don't have to hack this together on their own. Great. Um, yeah. So we'll add John to the uh, uh, Micro CFP so that way you can vote. And please remember to go to the Micro CFP channel and to give a thumbs up to the topics that you'd like to continue to having a discussion about. Uh, please do that while we're in the lightning talks. And uh, thank you, John. Cool. Thanks.